All right, chapter 410 is about anti-differentiation. And what that means is we're going to start in a derivative and go back to the function that created it. And these are your formulas for antiderivatives. And there's not a whole lot to them. All right, basically, you got all six of your um, trig derivatives. These are the actual derivatives. This is what came they came from. So cosine came from sine, right? So the derivative of sine is cosine, so the antiderivative of cosine is sine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so the derivative of sine is negative cosine. Antiderivative, right? Negative cosine. Um, secant squared is derivative of tangent, cosecant squared is derivative of cotangent, except it's negative, so notice that's negative. Secant tangent is derivative of tangent, cosecant cotangent is cosecant, but again it's negative. What I want you to see here is the answer to the derivatives, these are all the derivatives, is the original trig function. So there's your six, sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. If the answer is a cofunction, you change the sign. All right. If the answer is a cofunction, you change the sign. If the answer is a regular function, sine, tangent, secant, sine is whatever it is. For the cofunction answer, if your answer ends up being cosine, cosecant, cotangent, change the sign of the term. The other um, antiderivative rule is a function, um, just a polynomial structure, as long as n doesn't equal negative 1. All right? x to any power, you raise the power, divide by the new power. For example, if it's x to the ninth, its antiderivative is x to the tenth over 10. It just undoes the, the power rule. So if I had this term, 10 times 1 tenth makes 1, and we drop the power by 1, right? So the antiderivative formula just goes the other way. So if we're looking at a polynomial structure, antiderivatives are easy. If we're looking at a trig function that actually has one of these structures, it's easy. After that, it becomes much more difficult. All right? And um, the hard antiderivatives are in calculus too. In fact, hard antiderivatives is what calculus makes calculus too, in my opinion, the hardest calculus there is. Kind of climbing a mountain and Calculus 2 is like the high point of the mountain, and then calculus 3, 4, or whatever is like going back down the hill. They're still challenging, but compared to calculus 2, in my opinion, they aren't very difficult at all. So, anyway, antiderivatives themselves, though, are going to take some patience from you guys. Again, there's not a lot of formulas for it. That's it. Um, so, more comes from just a recognition of structure and as far as how to do them. So, let's take a look at example 1 here. Um, this is going to be our, our favorite structure for antiderivatives. It's going to be a polynomial structure. If you have a polynomial structure, you simply have to use that raise the power by 1 divided by the new power. So if this is the function, and if it's going to call it, it says find the most general antiderivative of this. It, we're looking at the derivative. All right? They're not going to identify it as such, but they're going to say find the antiderivative of this function. I like to put an f prime on it, so then I'm finding f of x. And if I'm doing f of x and I'm looking at power functions, I got 7x squared. x to the second power is the thing that has the antiderivative. 7 is just going to be there. 7 is not going to affect anything. So it's attached. So 7 gets rewritten. x gets rewritten to a higher power by 1. We divide by the higher power. So anytime you have that polynomial structure, x is raised to powers. You simply raise the power by 1, and you divide by the new power. The second object is minus 2x to the 5 thirds. It's going to be minus 2x. And again, I want to raise the power by 1. 1 plus 5 thirds is equal to 8 thirds. And I'm going to divide that by 8 thirds. Right. That happens a lot, where you have a fraction of a power. And you're going to have to add 1 to the fraction. If you're getting a new fraction power, you have to divide by a fraction. So I want to streamline that, streamline that a little bit, because that always happens. You divide by this fraction. Let's just take a look at that 2x to the 8 thirds, which is officially over 1, being multiplied then by 3 eighths, right? Okay? And that's what I want to get across to you is this, that divided by 8 thirds is the same as times 3 eighths. And again, in a fraction, in a fraction power structure like this, that happens a lot. So what I do personally when I see this scenario 
I know I'm supposed to divide by 8 thirds. I go ahead and make it times 3 eighths right off the bat. And the quicker you come to terms with that, the easier your life's going to be because those, those just get like that every time. And again, fractional powers are very common in this section. So just if you mentally think I'm dividing by a fraction, I multiply by the reciprocal. That's all that happens. So um, if I'm finishing this up, one last thing. Whenever you find an antiderivative, there's a possibility the original function had a constant. What's the derivative of constant? Zero. zero. So if I'm looking at the derivative, there's officially a plus zero attached to every derivative. That could have come from some constant that I have no idea about, right? So anytime you find the most general antiderivative of this, you're going to put a plus c on that. Okay? The last thing to do is to simplify each term individually. So um, looking at the red term, anything I can do to make 7x cubed over 3 any prettier, reducing a fraction, anything like that? No. So that's perfect. 7x cubed over 3. Can I do anything to make 3 times 2x to the 8 thirds over 8 any prettier? 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Anything else? Mm -hmm. How about the 2 and the 8 reduced to a 4 and a 1, maybe? So let's look to reduce fractions if possible. So I'm going to get minus 3x to the 8 thirds over 4 plus our constant. Antiderivatives are easy to check. If you're not sure you're right, you simply have to um, do the derivative. If you do the derivative of this, it should be that, right? If I try it out, if I go f prime of x off of this answer, so again, I'm done, right? So this is just me on a scratch of paper checking. 3 times 7 thirds is equal to 7. We drop the power by 1. 8 thirds times 3 fourths is equal to 2. We drop the power by 1. The derivative of c is 0. Same expression, right? So that's all, that's all you have to do to check an antiderivative. If you differentiate this, you get the exact thing, same thing you started off with. You have the right answer. Right. Do not forget the plus c. That is a nitpicky thing for me. I like the plus c's. Uh, there will be times when we get rid of the plus c's, but um, that's not till tomorrow. Right? But for right now, plus c on every one of these is just an antiderivative.